In 2009, a former stock market chairman, known as Bernie Madoff, was sentenced to 150 years in jail after he pleaded guilty to running the largest investment fraud in history. It is estimated that he defrauded over 40,000 people in 125 countries, which amounted to over $65 billion. So he ran his Ponzi scheme for at least 17 years without getting caught. And it's very surprising that he was able to pull this off for that long. But what's even more surprising is that in the aftermath, many forensic investigators began to wonder if there were any clues that could have alerted them to the scam earlier. As it turned out, Bernie Madoff's monthly return statements from one of his largest funds revealed a nonconformity with Benford's law. So yes, there were red flags in his financial statements that could have helped investigators identify fraud much earlier. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Benford's law is and how to apply Benford's first digit test using Tableau to detect potential fraud. Benford's law was discovered over 130 years ago by an American research physicist named Frank Benford, who observed that in a large random collection of data, natural numbers often follow a consistent pattern, which showed that small digits occurred more frequently than large digits. So according to this law, if you have a population of randomly generated numbers, you will see that number one will occur more frequently or 30% of the time, number two will appear 18% of the time, number three will account for 13% of all numbers, all the way down to number nine, which will appear around 5% of the time. So Benford applied this observation to a wide range of areas, such as war casualties, size of craters on the moon, population data, income distributions, and he found that a lot of these data sets actually adhere to this law. In fact, it has been shown that even COVID cases around the world also follow Benford's law. Today, knowledge of Benford's law is commonly used by forensic investigators to help detect financial fraud, but you can also apply Benford's law to analyze things like inventory prices, customer refunds, loan balances, and even stock prices. So let's dive into the technical stuff and see how to apply this law to a real data set. So here I'm working with sample Superstore data set and I'm performing my analysis using the first digit test on the frequency of sales transactions. The bars represent the frequency of the first integer in my transactional data set, and the line represents expected first digit frequencies based on Benford's law. As you can see, our actual sales transactions are really close to the proportions predicted by Benford's law. And if I hover over the first bar here, we can see that number one, as the first digit occurs 30.9% of the time in our actual data set. And if we compare this frequency to the one predicted by Benford's law, we notice a slight deviation. But for the most part, our data set does follow Benford's law. So now let's apply the same analysis to Madoff's monthly return statements. So the first thing we need to do is extract the first digit from the value we are analyzing. So in this case, we're going to do that using this formula right here. And the second step would be to create another calculated field that is going to give you the frequencies predicted by Benford's law. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our first digit calculation and drop it on columns. We're going to exclude zeros, and it will bring in the total number of records for our data set. So we're going to drag this in and place it into rows. We're going to change this to a table calculation that will give us the frequencies as a percentage of the total number of returns. So we're going to click on the number of records, select quick table calculation, and then we're going to choose percent of total. So here we can see that number one as the first digit occurs 39.2% of the time. Number two occurs 13.6% of the time. And now what we need to do is we need to compare these frequencies with expected frequencies predicted by Benford's law. So we're going to bring in our second calculation for Benford's law, we're going to drop it in the view, and then we're going to change the aggregation for Benford's law to give us the minimum. Next, I want to create a dual axis chart to combine both of these visualizations together. So we'll click on the drop down menu for Benford's law, and we're going to choose dual axis. We're going to synchronize our axes, so right click, synchronize axis, and then we're going to change our mark types for both measures. So for Benford's law, we're going to choose um, a line. 
And for our total count of records, we're going to choose a bar. So let's add a reference line to each bar in order to easily compare our actual values to our expected frequencies as depicted by Benford's law. So we're going to click on analytics. We're going to add a reference line and we want our reference line to be over top of each bar and we want the reference line to represent the cutoff value for Benford's law. Let's hide this axis on the right hand side. So right away, you may notice that this distribution looks a little bit different than what we saw by looking at our Superstore data set. Let's just jump back here for a quick second. So here we can see that our actual frequencies are actually really close to our predicted frequencies and we get a nice smooth distribution. If we go back to MADOS return statements, we can see that number one occurs 39.2% of the time, but the predicted value should be somewhere within 30%. So there's a 9% difference. And we can also see some additional deviations in this chart. There's a huge gap right here, a huge gap here for number three, number four, and number five. And then starting with number six, we actually begin to get higher frequencies of these four values. So let me jump into one of my other tabs here, which actually shows the difference in distribution between our values and Benford's law. So here I've created another calculated field that basically gives me the difference between our actual frequencies versus expected frequencies. So the key question here is how do we know what the acceptable threshold is? Is it 9.1%? Is it anything above 5%? Is it a couple of percent? So in order to figure that out, accounting researchers will actually rely on mean absolute deviation to assess the extent of nonconformity to Benford's law. So you would look at the range of values for the mean absolute deviation, and then you would decide if your actual values are acceptable or non-conformant. It is very difficult for humans to manually construct distributions that satisfy Benford's law, which makes it possible to easily identify phony numerical data with a simple first digit test. But in practice, more than one digit is typically used in order to carry out a more precise check. You also need to remember that not all data sets are going to be suitable for this analysis. For example, if you have data with certain limitations, such as human weight, height, or IQ scores, then you're not going to see the same geometric distribution as you would normally see for naturally occurring numbers, because Benford's law works under the assumption that the numbers in your data set are randomly generated. It is also not advisable to use Benford's law on small size data sets, so you need to make sure that your data sets contain at least 100 records or more. You also have the option to run a more granular analysis by performing a two-digit test or a first two-digit test, which examines digits from 10 to 99. And in some cases, this may be critical for certain types of data sets. So that is it for today's lecture on Benford's law. If you guys want to have a little fun with this law, try applying it to a data set containing credit card transactions or friend and follower accounts on online social media networks and see what you get. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more Tableau tutorials.